I found a free way to upscale your AI images in bulk. The tool I'm going to show you today has a really nice interface. It's very easy to use. There's no hidden costs. And most importantly, the upscaling results are amazing. So the tool in question today is called Upscale with a Y. And the cool thing about this tool is it actually downloads to your device and runs locally. So you will probably, once you use it, hear your computer fan or laptop fans spinning higher or louder. And that means that you're not reliant on a, a server. So if like, usually when a website is overloaded, then the upscales are running slow. In this case, you can only blame your own computer if this is taking very long. So um, right now, all you have to do on this homepage, which I will link in the description, is just click on download right here for the correct operating system. So in my case, that would be Windows. Just click on that and it's going to download an installation file. Open that installation file, run through it. Very simple, straightforward. And then you'll be able to open upscale on your PC. So once you've installed and opened up upscale, there's a few settings you can configure before you get started. So head into the settings tab right here. You can change the theme. So this is just the color of your program, essentially quite fun to play around with. Then we've got a few options that I'm not too sure about. You can add custom models of upscalers if you're into that, and you can decide what the output file format will be. So I've got this set to JPEG because typically with photographic types of images, PNG files are quite large in the file size whereas JPEGs are a bit smaller, and I'm talking about megabytes, gigabytes, not about like file dimensions in terms of pixels. But unfortunately, with the bulk upscaler, it always seems to force PNG as the output file. Then we've also got image scale right here, which is set to 4x by default, so you'll get it four times as big, but you can turn this down as well. At the bottom, we've got logs and a donate button. But if we head back to upscale right now, First of all, by default, it will be set to the singular upscaling model. So here, you can select the image, the input file. You can select the model of upscaling. There's a few different ones. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a comparison of each of these different models so you can make a better informed choice. I've tested them all with the same image. Um, you can also tick double upscale, which is quite interesting. If this is enabled, it will essentially upscale the image once four times and then that image will be upscaled again four times that means the end result is going to be 16 times as big as the original file which gets some really really crazy results it takes a long time to do that but it is possible which is quite cool and at the bottom select the output folder of course and then you can hit upscale if you're ready now this is for the single images in order to do a bulk upscale just tick the batch option up here and then this is basically the same except for the double upscale uh, function disappears so let me just select my folder i've got a lot of mid journey images that are around a thousand pixels large so this is the folder i'll just hit select then I will use the default model right here for upscaling, which is quite good for photos. And the output folder path is uh, automatically configured, so you don't have to set a specific output folder here. It does create one for you automatically. You can leave this blank. And then once you're ready, just hit upscale at the bottom. It's going to say doing the upscale magic. Give you a percentage for each image that is upscaling. You will probably notice your PC getting slightly louder. And you can then also watch within the actual folder, you can see these images or the upscaled images being created. And one more thing to note while this is running, the engine that's being used here called um, Real ESR GAN, that is actually, I'm pretty sure, the same one that we had with uh, Nightmare AI, which is one of the upscalers that I used to recommend a lot in, in my early days of AI art, because that one used to be free and got really good results. It's not free anymore, it is limited, but this right here should give you the same sorts of results, but without a paywall. So here we go, the results are in. This only took about four minutes running in the background. I didn't have to do anything. It got quite loud, like the fans did, but besides that, no issues. And if we open some of these up um, and zoom in right here, the result is definitely really, really nice. Looks crisp, looks tons better than uh, the original mid-journey outcome. Let's click on another one of these. Um, that looks pretty good as well, uh, even zooming in quite close. 
um, it still looks very very sleek so um, let's actually jump into Photoshop so I can compare the same image but with different models of this upscaler so you know which one to choose for your artwork so here we've got my trusty wolf warrior image if I zoom back into the face area because the ear is quite a good one and the eye to get an idea as to how these upscalers work um, so the first model I've got selected right here is the ultra sharp one which is I think the last one so we're working from bottom upwards ultra sharp as you would expect gives you quite a lot of detail but often a lot of detail also comes with a bit of a grainy feel so this eye is a bit um, grainy and not pixelated but yeah it just doesn't look ideal um, it's not a bad result looks quite good and for some specific detailed images I can see this working very well if we hide ultra sharp now we will get the ultra mix balanced option this one is very similar this may be not as grainy if I zoom back into here this is ultra sharp this is balanced again not much of a difference can't really say much about that then the remacry option is next so if I hide balance now, Remacri, definitely if we if you focus on the colors right here, gives you a better differentiation between the different grays. In my opinion, it's not as grainy, um, gives a nicer, um, nicer outline right here as well, not as blurry. But the one downside is you get this ghosting effect, which is quite a lot more than with the previous models. Uh, this is ultra sharp and this is remacry so you've got this bit of ghosting here which is annoying but besides that that is quite a good option in my opinion moving on we've got digital art this is if i hide remacry now even smoother it loses a lot of the detail but the the colors look a lot more flat a lot more like a vector sort of graphic and the eye also very smooth no funky sort of color distortion or grain if i go back to ultra sharp you will see a massive contrast um, in terms of the detail the colors and just the feel of the image so digital art as the name says is better for cartoon type of graphics vector art that sort of stuff photographs it's probably not going to give you a very nice result um, but yeah it, it does definitely have its uses and also the ghosting effect is gone which is really really nice next up we've got the real option at the top but the fast one so the fast one doesn't give you the greatest results it's quite a bit blurry and not the best quality um, but it is faster so that is the upside there then if i hide that we get the normal real engine just not the fast option and as you can see that is way better so zooming into the ear this is fast get this sort of glow effect as well around the edge this is the slow option very very good looking um, if you look at the eye as well concentrate on this this is the normal one this is the fast option way worse way more blurry so i wouldn't recommend using the fast option unless your pc is really really bad and it's taking you hours and hours to upscale your images um, if we hide all of these now you're going to see a 16x upscale so I essentially selected the double upscale function with the real uh, engine which is one of my favorites for sure so hiding this one now you can see a massive massive image that's been upscaled to uh, 16 times its original size this is real times four this is real times 16 and the, the detail in this is crazy this looks lot like actual real fur so good job right there uh, it took a long time but i mean looking at this result it is definitely worth it over the other one it looks a lot a lot better so um, yeah definitely try out the double upscale if you can unfortunately it's not part of the bulk upscaler but i do understand that because it will probably take hours and hours to do um, so yeah i hope this gives you a good idea my favorites are probably the real engine the digital art for specific types of graphics and the re macri besides that a very cool tool i hope this helped you choose which upscale method to use yourself it always depends on the input image you might uh, find that one of the ultra sharp ones or balanced ones works well for your input 
it, even though it didn't work right here in my case. If you're creating a lot of cartoon themed or t-shirt design style graphics with AI generators, then sometimes the best way to actually upscale these is to turn them into vectors. And if you want to learn how to do that in bulk as well, make sure to check out this video next, where I show you a tool that can help you do that process very easily. Thank you.